With the Uproadies, one thing that separates big mainstream brands from budget brands is the fact that they have all the available resources for R&D and can come up with innovative ideas both in terms of the advanced hardware itself and also for software and brand collaborations. That is exactly what the ROG Harp Ace AimLab Edition brings to the table. The ROG Harp Ace features tri-mode connectivity with ROG Speed Nova 2.4GHz mode, ROG Aimpoint optical sensor with industry-leading less than 1 CPI deviation. It also has ROG micro switches with up to a 70 million click lifespan, ROG power cable, and 100% PTFE gliders all in a symmetrical, lightweight 54 grams construction. And in collaboration with AimLab also offers tailor-made software integration and a special edition ROG Hone Ace mousepad with a built-in ruler for precise DPI measurements and 180-degree flick training. I'll try to squeeze in all the information I can share with you in just a short amount of time. So let's get into it. Nothing's new in terms of the packaging, so let's get right into the contents. Inside the box, we have a welcome letter from both ROG and AimLab. The ROG Harp Ace mouse itself, protected by a soft cloth fabric, a paracord cable, a small accessory pouch that houses the anti-slip grip tape, some replacement PTFE gliders, a set of ROG and AimLab stickers, a warranty guide, the user manual, and a USB Type-A to Type-C adapter. At first look and touch, the ROG Harp Ace definitely feels light considering its size and they've done it without the need to resort to perforations, which is pretty awesome. It weighs roughly around 54.2 grams. Looking around, we have the left and right primary buttons featuring carefully picked ROG micro switches that in my opinion offer a fairly lightweight actuation force and crispy click. It's slightly heavier than the Kill GM 8.0 and has a tad deeper sound signature. The actuation force is light enough to prevent finger fatigue while providing a decent amount of resistance to avoid misclick, especially when compared to the Kill GM 8.0. The scroll wheel offers subtle but precise tactile notches with a deep sound signature. However, while it doesn't have any squeaking sounds, I can definitely notice a fair amount of side-to-side -side wobble. Here at the rear end, we have a subtle and illuminated ROG logo. The only RGB lighting that we have on this mouse is on the scroll wheel. Now flipping it on the left side, we have the side buttons that feature a higher pitch sound signature and offer a substantial amount of tactile and click feedback without being too mushy. The flat profile and placement of the side buttons make it comfortable to click and almost no grip adjustment is needed to reach both of them even for my small hand. We can also see here the side profile of this mouse with a longer than usual top curvature giving more support towards the rear end and I can definitely feel that underneath the center of my palm. And lastly here on the left side, we also have a subtle AimLab logo and some diagonal patterns for better grip. Looking at the back side, you'll get a better look at the bump and it goes without saying that this mouse features a symmetrical form factor. Flipping it on the right side, you'll see an ROG logo and the same diagonal pattern. Turning it on the front side, we have a quite unique shape for the primary buttons with a distinct groove to glide your finger towards the right spot. It doesn't conform to the overall rounded curve of the entire shell. We also have the USB Type-C port with a generous 14.8mm clearance for any plug. Now looking at the bottom, we have 5 100% PTFE gliders, all with curved edges. We also have dedicated buttons for DPI and pairing, the switch for the tri-mode connectivity, the ROG Aimpoint optical sensor, and a 2.4GHz USB dongle nicely tucked inside. In terms of build quality, the ROG Harp Ace, as lightweight as it is, features a quite robust chassis with no squeaking sounds. If you squeeze it with an absurd amount of force, you'll notice some flex but on normal use, it feels durable enough. It also has a nice textured finish but after a while of playing with it, it starts to get oily. So the anti-slip grip tape will definitely help with that. Now before we move on, here's a quick sound test for you guys. Now, in terms of grip styles, with the big body and prolonged curvature towards the rear end, I'm having difficulties reaching the front end of the primary buttons, so palm grip for the size of my hand would be a challenge here. Fingertip and claw grip is more comfortable here in my opinion. 
But one thing that stands out here is the prolonged curvature towards the rear end as you'll definitely feel it. If you have a small hand like mine and are used to doing micro adjustments using your thumb, right ring, and pinky fingers, the bump that always touches your palm could get in the way, so forearm adjustment is ideal for this mouse. Now most of the weight distribution leans towards the front, so just bear that in mind. Okay, so with all the basic stuff out in the way, let's focus our attention on its AimLab integration and how you can make the most out of it. Hardware-wise, the ROG Harp Ace resembles the cyan colorway of the AimLab brand on its forward and back buttons together with the subtle AimLab logo. They also released the ROG Hone Ace mousepad which features an integrated ruler. You can use this ruler to measure your mouse's exact DPI value and its deviation. There's still a good chance for human error here but at least it makes the testing a lot easier than using a standard ruler. As you can see, the deviation on my ROG Harp Ace is right on par with the specified less than 1% deviation. To be fair, the Fantic Aria XD7 with the 3395 sensor got the same result. I'm not an expert on this, so take this with a grain of salt. Now, another thing that you can take advantage of here is the AimLab software. I gotta be honest with you guys, this is the first time I tried AimLab because I'm such a boomer and I feel like I'm too old for this thing. So a nice 69,000 score is all I got. <laughs> But what I appreciate the most here is the in-depth insights that tells me about my strengths and weaknesses that I have to improve on. And it's fairly consistent on its report after trying it out several times. But here's the thing. This AimLab training is in my opinion just a reference and not the absolute guide on which setting you need to do. Here, let me explain. So I tried the settings optimizer which essentially lets you run through a set of tests to determine your ideal settings. These tests include variable tracking speed, which is one of the most difficult tests here, quick disappearing blobs for quick flicks, and small slow disappearing blobs for precise targeting. In the end, it gave me an exact sensitivity setting that I can apply to my profile. Next, I did the mouse DPI test with pretty much the same set of tests and at the end, it suggested a 1600 DPI which is absolutely insane. I typically use 800 DPI in-game, so I declined the suggestion. But I got curious, so I tried 1600 DPI in Valorant, and to no surprise, it was barely playable. I finished fourth but almost got dizzy. I tried my normal 800 DPI with my usual microcontrol mousepad and finished first two times, so the settings optimizer is definitely wrong about that suggestion. To be fair, during those tests, I tend to undershoot, so maybe that's why it suggested a higher DPI, but 1600 is just too much for me. So yeah, in my opinion, these tests and suggestions are just for reference. Now another thing that you can do here, which I think is really helpful, is the ROG training space. These tests are more difficult than the standard grid shot but are definitely fun to try. My personal favorite is the ROG 360 wherein you can practice your 180 degree flick using both the on-screen ruler and the ruler on the ROG Hone Ace. This will give you an idea how much you need to move your mouse for a complete 180 degree turn and build your muscle memory. Overall, at the end of the day, these are mere guide and reference to train your muscle memory in preparation for the actual grind in-game. Your experience may vary of course, maybe you'll be given a much more accurate suggestion than what I got, so yeah. By the way, the ROG Hone Ace offers a quite smooth texture with a bit of control and the build quality and print are pretty decent as well. It's not for me though, too smooth for my liking, especially with my higher than usual 800 DPI. If you also want to opt for the wired mode, just in case you run out of battery, the included paracord cable is lightweight and flexible enough to not get in the way. Speaking of battery, it is rated to last up to 90 hours, which is pretty good. Now, in terms of my gaming experience, everything from the micro switches, scroll wheel, and the sensor is top notch, I didn't find them a hindrance in terms of my gaming performance. However, the shape made it unbearable for me. I can try my best and perform decently, but sometimes the big form factor with the prolonged rear bump gets in the way of my micro adjustments, which is quite frustrating during clutch moments. The bomb makes it hard for me to do sudden crosshair adjustments as I use my fingers instead of my forearm to do that. Your mileage may vary of course depending on your playstyle. Sensor performance wise, using the mouse tester by Micro, I noticed a quite consistent spike for around 3 to 4 meters per second quick flicks as you can see here on these graphs. I'm not sure if I can feel that in game though, but it is worth mentioning. For context, here's a perfect graph that I captured using the same mouse. Aside from that, no problems with slow tracking and no apparent jittering whatsoever as well. The polling rate is also outstanding and consistent as you can see here, way above what my other budget mouse can reach in terms of average. And lastly, in terms of software, of course, we have the ROG Armory Crate. Honestly, I'm not a fan of this software as it constantly asks you to update and doesn't give you the option to decline. You won't be able to use other settings until you do so, which is frankly very annoying at times. However, when it works normally, it is definitely feature-packed and very useful. 
All the buttons except for the main primary buttons are highly customizable. You can even do key combinations for switching between profiles. The forward and back buttons are also equally customizable. Under the performance tab, we can set up to 4 DPI stages and you can set DPI settings in increments of 50. You can also change the color of each DPI stage. We also have here the polling rate up to 1000Hz and other settings including the angle tuning which is otherwise not available on other gaming mice. We also have the lighting tab although it is just limited to the scroll wheel. We also have mouse pad calibration, the power tab wherein you can set battery alerts and sleep mode time, and the firmware update tab. Overall, a pretty powerful software. I just hope they allow us to skip updates unless it's necessary to fix an issue. Alright, so to conclude, I like everything the ROG Harp Ace and Hone Ace have to offer. The build quality is outstanding, the construction is amazingly lightweight for a mouse that doesn't have any holes in it, the micro switches are super nice, the sensor is quite decent, the tri-mode connectivity is definitely a plus, and the collaboration with AimLab is definitely helpful in some extent. However, the size and shape are not for my small and chubby hands. Other than that, a very good lightweight symmetrical gaming mouse to consider. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Full disclaimer, ROG sent both the ROG Harp Ace and Hone Ace as a review sample, but this video is not sponsored or paid. They'll see this video at the same time as you. If you're interested in these products, I'll put some links below. Thank you for watching, please consider subscribing to help me grow this channel, and see you next time. Have a great day guys, you're awesome.